Great, we have the shapefile on the left side with this data, and we have the attribute table on the right side where the educational data are. Now we want to append this table to this one here. And to be able to do that, we need one thing. And that thing is a matching column. So we need to have a column that is the same here and the same here. And that column is the GeoID or the GeoID if, if you like. Now what GeoID is, it is basically an identifier of US Census uh, geographic features. So this one here for, for block groups, this is a 12 digit number. And for deeper levels, let's say for blocks, uh, it, it is a number with more digits. And for less detailed uh, levels, let's, such as census tracts or counties, uh, the number will have less digits. But anyway, in this case, we have block groups and we have the joint. And here, these attributes are also on a block group level, even though they don't have uh, a geometry associated with them because this is just a CSV file and this is a, a dot shape file. So this one here, this column here, which is uh, GeoID2, corresponds with this column here. And we'll make use of that and we'll join these two tables inside QGIS. So, we have the shapefile loaded in here and we also need to load the CSV file. That would be this one here. Alright. So, the attributes and again what we need is we have to look at the metadata we wanted the master degree which is this one here so hd1 vd23 and don't confuse this this is the estimate this is the, the actual count for the master degree this is the margin of error this is the margin of error so it's an indicator of how accurate uh, these estimates are. So if you want to go really fancy, you, you can have a look at the errors for each row. But normally you'll uh, not have to do that, so just focus on this HD1 VD23 for now. So, you go over to the properties of the shapefile, and then to join. And here is where you join a table to the shapefile. So you go to the plus sign and say which layer you, we want to join. So we want the CSV layer, which is this one. And what field you want from the CSV layer to play uh, the role of the matching field. So we said it was a GeoID2. The target field in the shapefile is GeoID. And then if you want all the data, all the, all the columns from the attribute table, of the CSV file, you can leave this as it is, but if you want to choose specific fields, you want to check this option. And then go to, we said, HD1, uh, VD23, yeah. Click OK, apply, and OK again. And now, if you open the attribute table of the shape file, okay. I'll expand that. You'll see that we have a new column. Now, don't be afraid of these null values. We have null values because, you know, uh, the, the shape file is for the entire uh, California. But the CSV file was for uh, the, the county of San Francisco only, uh, which is inside California. So, naturally, you'll have a lot of block groups that will not get an attribute from the CSV file. But if you click on this, you, you'll make a QGIS to, to sort your, your values according to this row. So you can sort them from the smaller value to the greater one, or from the greater one to the smallest value, as we are now. So we have a lot of block groups uh, without, without this, this attribute here. And what we want to do is to remove those block groups that we don't have a value for the estimates of people who have a master degree. And one way to remove those block groups is to actually have a shapefile, a polygon of the San Francisco County, and then you can perform a clip. So you can clip this vector layer to the layer of the San Francisco County, and then you'll end up with only the block groups for the San Francisco. However, another way, which I'll apply in this case, 
and you could actually select all these rows manually until you go to the new values for this column and then perform an inverse selection so that you could select the new values but this is not the best way still a good way to perform selections is to uh, first clear the selections if you have any so unselect all and then go to select features using an expression so here you can write an expression and have QGS select the features you want. So in this case, we would like to select the features that have uh, this column assigned to null. So you could go to fields and values. And here are all the fields that you have in the table. And double click this field. Alright. Let me expand this. Now. We want those rows where this column has a value of null. Go to select, close, and have a look what you got. So you got all the rows with null value. Next, what you want to do is delete these features. But the problem is this icon here uh, that deletes uh, selected features is grayed out. And the reason is that you haven't opened an editing session in QGIS. So what to do is toggle editing mode. And now you can press this button. So all these rows will disappear now. Great. If you close this attribute table now, and this one too, And you also need to close the editing session. You can do that from here. Save the edits. And if you zoom in, you'll see that this is actually San Francisco. And if you're not sure about that, you can go to web and use the OpenLayers plugin to actually load an OpenStreetMap. So. San Francisco there, and if you drag this up, yep. So we have the blog groups for the San Francisco area. And they have the attributes about people with master degrees for every neighborhood. Now I can overlay other layers here. Let's say I want to overlay the layer with the supermarkets. It should be here, yep. Here it is. So we have only a few points here, but you, you get the idea. So what's next? Well, next is to stylize the polygon layer, the, the block groups layer, so that we can actually have the map show some actual information. So let's do that in the next lecture.